Well, my name is Mariano Sanz. I am from Madrid. And my main work is uh, a teacher, an educator. I am professor at the University Complutense of Madrid, and I direct the graduate program in periodontology and implant dentistry. So I have about uh, five students per year for a three-year full-time program that become specialists in periodontics and implant dentistry. Well, the lecture I presented is product of uh, extensive clinical research that we have uh, carried out in Madrid in conjunction with other centers in Europe. Uh, we were very interested uh, to understand in which are the key factors which are relevant to the procedures that we do whenever we extract a tooth and place an implant, whether we can do it predictably at the same surgical procedure or whether we should wait or, on the contrary, whether we should fill the socket in order to preserve the alveolar crest. These are procedures that are done extensively in the clinic, but we need more information on what are the key factors and what is the predictability of each and one of these procedures. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that uh, it is important to understand that uh, we need to focus on the prevention of the natural dentition and we need to focus on the critical aspects of prevention in order to have our patients maintain their natural teeth for, for long. And of course, this has to deal with uh, patient education and with the periodontal services that we provide to the population. There are populations that have more risk factors as populations that tend to smoke more or populations that tend to have uh, a, a lower access to oral health services. And these populations, together with the medically compromised, are the populations that are, will be more prone to suffer periodontal disease. And if not serviced properly, and if not uh, having the proper preventive measures, they will lose their teeth. So uh, in these situations, of course, uh, the loss of a tooth uh, will require some restoration, some rehabilitation of the lost dentition. And of course, we need to understand what are the critical factors whenever we place implants in order to achieve the best outcome, both in terms of restoring the natural dentition as well as the aesthetic outcomes, because of course patients are very interested, not so much whether we place an implant or a graft, but they are very interested to have a restored dentition that looks natural and have a proper function. Uh, of course, uh, dental implants, uh, the advent of dental implants have meant uh, a significant improvement uh, of uh, patient well-being because uh, in a very predictable manner we are able to restore lost dentitions. So this is probably the biggest revolution in dentistry for many, many years. And the way we practice today with dental implants uh, is significantly changed the way we practiced 25 years ago. But having said so, it has also the other component. These dental implants uh, are, are, are costly, both for the dentist and for the patient. And uh, there is a very important economic impact in uh, implant dentistry and the extensive use of implant dentistry. And these, in, in many occasions, have tilted the balance between a preventive approach or a very uh, aggressively therapeutic approach and therefore we can say that in the specific areas of our profession there has been and there still is uh, an overuse of dental implants or what I would call an abuse of dental extraction. Perhaps teeth that uh, we could uh, save with the proper prevention and the proper periodontal therapy uh, are extracted and replaced by dental implants. But of course uh, the more we know about the predictability of implant therapy on one side and the predictability of periodontal therapy on the other side, we understand that there needs to be a balance 
of aiming to preserve natural teeth when it's possible, and at the same time, whenever we have to place implants, to do it in the proper way, and also understanding that dental implants are not immune to oral infections. So implant implants can get infected and therefore similar, if not more aggressive, preventive measurements should be imposed whenever we use this therapy. Yes, definitely uh, one of the innovations that we are applying to, to dentistry and, and specifically to, to periodontics and also to implant dentistry is our ability to reconstruct the tissues, both hard tissues and soft tissues. Ideally, we dream to have a therapy or a therapeutic concept that will enable us to restore the periodontium that the patient has lost due to periodontitis. But unfortunately, we are not there yet. We can partially restore the periodontium, but we cannot fully in a vertical manner, restore the periodontium. But I'm confident that with the new understanding on the biology of wound healing, the new understanding of the cells and the growth factors, and with the new advent of very sophisticated scaffolds that we can use, this concept of bioengineering will definitely come to the preservation of the natural dentition. Of course, if we can preserve the natural dentition, we will not have so much need of dental implants. But uh, clearly, when we place dental implants, ideally we'd be in situations that we have restored the bone crest to the maximum height and width. So these reconstructive techniques will equally be applied with dental implants to the best outcome of our implant restorations. So in one side, I think the future is bright in terms of tissue regeneration and tissue reconstruction. We need to develop the proper biological understanding and the proper surgical techniques. And of course, the proper biomaterials to be used. And on the other side, I think we need to understand better the dynamics of bacterial colonization in the mouth and how we can fight the development and the establishment of oral biofilms, both in dental surfaces as well as in implant surfaces. And clearly we can control uh, the bacterial colonization in the mouth. Uh, then we will not need uh, implants and we will not need to reconstruct the tissues because we will prevent the diseases to occur. But uh, perhaps we are far from there yet but I'm sure that the more we focus our investigations in the dynamics of the bacterial colonization in the oral cavity, the better we will be prepared to deal with these diseases. Well, I, I love to do many things outside dentistry. Uh, one of my hobbies is to cook, and I like to cook, and I like to eat, and I like to buy the food. And also I like to do sports, I play tennis, and I enjoy cycling, and I enjoy jogging, and I wished I would have more time to do all these things. Uh, also one of the things uh, I do most for pleasure is uh, to read. I love uh, contemporary as well as uh, classic uh, literature, and since I spend uh, so many hours in aeroplanes, uh, I consume uh, a lot of book reading, which I enjoy very much. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.